Paradox Interactive is a legendary Sweden-based publishing company. Along with being a publishing company, they also have their own game development branch with the same name. Almost every single game they've created or published is of extremely high quality and it's extremely addicting. Such games include Stellaris, Crusader Kings, Europa, and Pillars of Eternity. There are obviously many, many more games that they've created, but I would say that these four series are the most recognizable. As you can probably tell, their specialty is strategy games, since three of their most popular series are war and resource management strategy games. It is unarguable that they create amazing strategy games. I have pers personally both played cre cre <laughs> Holy shit. Crusader Kings, guys. I can't say the damn name. Crusader Kings! <laughs> anyway, I have played Crusader Kings and Solaris. I found them both incredibly enjoyable, and I still play regularly to this day. As good as Paradox is at creating games, however, I would never, ever recommend one of these games to my friends. And that's because how incredibly greedy and anti-user friendly Paradox Interactive truly is. Paradox gets you addicted by creating an incredibly good early game experience in both Stellaris and Crusader Kings, but then purposely leaves the late game kind of empty and not really that fun. And now, you might be thinking, why would, do, why would they do that? Is that just bad game design or an oversight? Well, why well, it is actually just bad game design. Unfortunately, that's not, it's just, that's not what it's chalked up to. They purposely make a bad late game so that they can sell late game content as expensive and nearly required DLCs to make the late game playable. They purposely make their late games bad so that you have to pay them more money in order to enjoy it. And by the time you get to the late game and figure out it's dog shit, you're already addicted since you've enjoyed the mechanic of their mechanics of their early game so damn much, and it's nearly impossible to find a strategy game as high as the quality that Paradox produces. And that's just how they get you stuck, continually making DLC that 100% only makes the game better, but barely provides any content and they overprice them to high hell. For the next part of the video, I'm going to be going into Slayers particularly, and Paradox's nearly evil level of DLC in it. To immediately show you how bad the DLC situation is in Solaris, there are three different types of DLC in Solaris. Yes, you heard that right. Not three different DLCs, but three different types of DLCs. The three types are major DLCs, that add new gameplay features and that pretty much affect the entire way the game is played. Each one costs $20. There are story packs, that add new origins for the player to start off with, and it kind of affects you throughout your playthrough. Each one of these are $10. And then last, and most certainly least, are the species packs, which add a new type of species to play as, and a few new nation, like national policies as well that you can implement throughout your playthrough. And they cost around $8 each. I won't go into too much detail on what each type of DLC includes, since what actually is in them isn't really that important. But I will tell you how much different the different types of DLC affect the game so you have an understanding of how toxic they are. The first DLC type I want to go into more depth about are the so-called major DLCs. The major DLCs that are currently out are Utopia, Apocalypse, Megacorp, Federations, and Nemesis. Each costs $20 and to buy all of them it would add up to $100. Utopia is considered the uh, must buy by anyone who's played Stellaris and if you look at the comments on Steam Many say that Stellaris isn't even worth playing without the late game content that Utopia provides. This is unfortunately very accurate through my own experience and is required is a required $20 to spend on a game that already costs $40 to buy. Both Apocalypse and Nemesis are advertised as huge DLCs that allow you to take the mantle of a villain and really give you an access to a huge amount of technologies and new ship types that allow you to destroy galactic society. Unfortunately, both DLCs barely add any content, or are more like story packs than true DLC. Both are rated as mixed on Steam, and you know that your game has to be bad to be rated as mixed, and I've been as low as slightly negative before. Uh, many people felt like they were misled with how much content these DLCs added by their descriptions, and they all agreed that a $20 price tag was way too much for the limited features that, that the DLCs added that most games will just include as regular updates, but those most games aren't created by Paradox. 
The next DLC I want to talk about is Megacorp. Megacorp is basically... Megacorp basically really improves the trading features of the game and creates a whole new way to play the game by expanding on the economic size of things a pretty huge amount. This is probably the only DLC that actually feels like a D DLC and isn't something that should be inherently in the main game. I believe that the $20 price tag is still too much. However, I don't mind it that much. If every DLC was like this, then I would not have made this video. The final DLC that I want to talk about, and by far the most nefarious, evil, terrible, despicable DLC in my opinion, is the Federation's DLC. The reason this DC DLC is so nefarious is because all it does is expand on a terrible system that's already in the game, and that's the Federation system. In the base game, Federations are honestly nearly pointless and have an incredibly limited number of features. The only thing they're really good for is forming a permanent defense pact with, you know, your allies, or making sure that your neighbor is your friend instead of an enemy. The Fit Federation DLC makes Federation somewhat viable and an interesting game mechanic. However, however, every single feature added should have been in the base game as a feature already connected to Federations. It feels like they purposely made federation, Federations in the base game incredibly bare bones and pointless in order just to sell it to you for $20. It's honestly disgusting and embarrassing that they would even create a whole DLC to improve a feature that they just made poorly in the base game. That that one really pisses me off, guys. I'm not going to lie. Going off script, looking at what I wrote, and just thinking about Federation's DLC pisses me off. God damn. Now that we've gone over the major DLCs, I'm going to give a shorter summary of the other two types. There are currently four story packs. Each one costs $10 or $40 for all four. Story packs add a very minimal amount of content and none are worth the price tag. However, at the very least, none of them are required to enjoy the game. I would never recommend buying any of these unless you really enjoy Slayers and have already explored all the content available to you. The next and final type of DLC are the Species Packs. Species Packs are $8 a piece and there's a total of five of them, adding up to $40 total. They don't really add that much, they do feel like DLCs, I'm not too mad about them besides that the fact they are a little bit overpriced. Overall, they're probably the best value of all the DLCs on average, and I wouldn't say they're completely evil, but just, you know, immoral. Anyway, now that we talked about all of the content behind the paywalls in Slayers, let's go ahead up and add out how much it costs to buy every single piece of content available for the game. Adding everything up equates to a cost of $180. $40 for the base game, $100 for big DLCs, $40 for story packs, and $40 for species packs. $180 for a game is absolutely insane, ridiculous, despicable, disgusting, and vile. $180. This isn't the only Paradox game that has received this treatment. However, I do feel like Solaris is the most prominent example of it. Now I'm going to end this video with an interesting fact. Paradox, Paradox Interactive is partially owned by Tencent. And after learning all that, it makes sense. Paradox sold their soul to Tencent, and now Tencent is using them as a money farm. As we all know, Tencent is one of the most evil, despicable game companies in the world. Unfortunately, guys, that's a JK, JK little joke because Tencent actually only owns 5% of the company, only acquired it in 2016, and that's far after Paradox started marketing its toxic DLC system. So, this is a rare non-Tencent fault in my opinion. Maybe they made it worse when they came, but it was already a problem with Paradox Interactive. But I would say most of the game for uh, all of this DLC shit should go to Paradox Interactive for perhaps being one of the most greedy game publishers slash developers in the history of gaming. This has been Game Fanatic Cook. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that I opened your eyes to how fucking vile Paradox is and how I feel bad for every other Stellaris enjoyer out there. Our lives suck, our lives are terrible, and we have to pay a fucking $20 tax to Paradox Interactive every six months in order to enjoy our favorite game. Fuck Paradox Interactive. Stellaris is an amazing game that is held back by the slimy tactics of its creator, its developers. I'm happy they're still involved with the game, but I wish they would just make fucking patches and updates instead of making more bullshit content that barely adds anything than charging us 20 goddamn dollars for it. 
if all the content together that they've made as DLC combined cost forty dollars, that would be a good qual- that would be a good price DLC. But god damn it, it costs hundred and forty dollars, and that is ridiculous, despicable, and disgusting. As you can probably tell, this makes me very mad. Anyway, I, I gotta end this before I have blow a gasket, my blood pressure rises, and I have a heart attack and die, and my last words were fuck Paradox Interactive.